TJ Johnson. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm Timothy Reuter, and I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm Chance Roth, and I'm from San Diego. Our company is AirDroids, and our first product is the Pocket Drone, which is a folding flying robot that can carry a high-quality camera into the air. I used to work in Afghanistan, and when I came home, I was trying to figure out what to do next. And so I thought, why don't I start building robots? And from that came the insight that the only thing cooler than a robot is a flying robot. For me, I was an engineer. I went through engineering school, and even while I was there, I was always working on prototypes and other things. I got my pilot's license while I was there. And when I met up with Timothy here, it was really a perfect situation that led me to build something fun that I enjoyed doing and really enjoyed working with. I used to um, win a toy, uh, in a toy manufacturing company called Atomic Toys and sold millions of remote control cars the size of Hot Wheels. And that's really why uh, I'm able to help these guys you know, and get together with them and put this in the market. And it's, it's a team effort. It's the only drone on the market that folds up small enough to fit in a cargo pants pocket, but can carry a high quality sports camera like a GoPro into the air. It also has the longest flight time of any multicopter under $500, and it weighs around a pound. It's a really exciting technology that allows the democratization of the sky. I mean, before, only governments and big corporations had the means to see the world from that perspective. And to take something that seems so science fiction-y, frankly, and make it into a reality for people today is an incredibly exciting thing. We came to Hardware Battlefield to win and also to get as much attention for our product as possible. We can win because flying robots are just awesome. And everyone can have one now. Who likes drones? Everyone likes drones. And I'd like to introduce you to Timothy, Chance, and TJ. You have six minutes starting now. Great. Well, we're here today to show you the future of consumer and commercial drones. 2014 is going to be the year of the drone. And you don't have to look very hard to see that the media is covering drones on just about a daily basis. And they've captured the imagination of the public. After all, flying robots are cool and exciting. We've heard a lot about what the government has been doing with drones and what businesses hope to do with drones in the future. But what we're focused on is getting everyday people excited about owning and operating their own personal drones for all types of applications. I'm Timothy Reuter, president of AirDroids and founder of the Drone User Group Network. The Drone User Group Network is the largest community organization in the world de dedicated to teaching people to build and operate their own flying robots. This is uh, TJ Johnson. He's our lead engineer and an intellectual property attorney. And this is Chance Roth, a serial entrepreneur who's manufactured and sold millions of RC hobby and toy vehicles. And we uh, founded AirDroids to pioneer consumer and commercial drone hardware and software. Now, through our drone communities, we'd seen literally hundreds of different dr drone designs. And we weren't satisfied with anything we saw in the market. DIY kits were powerful and flexible, but they were frustrating for those who wanted to get flying right away. Off-the-shelf products were, A, you could fly out of the box, but they tended to either be expensive or limited in their functionality. There wasn't anything that was fully featured and yet affordable. And everything required you to take a separate case along with you that was big and bulky. There weren't any drones that were convenient. Now, we've been working on these problems for the last year, and we're excited to announce the launch of our first product, the Pocket Drone. It's powerful enough to carry a GoPro into the air, but folds up small enough to take with you just about anywhere you go. It works with everything you need out of the box, like an off-the-shelf product but has all the powerful features you'd expect from an advanced open source kit. And here it is flying, the Pocket Drone, your personal flying robot. It has all the little features done right, which add up to a significant advance in commercially available drones. So those features in include an exclusive folding frame design, 
and specially designed props for optimized performance that also collapse to make the overall unit doubly compact. It can be piloted with a radio controller, or you can use a tablet. And despite being easy to use, it has advanced features like GPS-enabled autopilot, flight planning with Google Maps, and a follow me feature, which just like it sounds, will allow the drone to follow you wherever you go without having to touch the controllers. And even with all these features, it's the only drone product under $500 that will carry a camera for up to 20 minutes. That's nearly twice as long as our competitors. Now, just like the iPhone wasn't the first smartphone, we know this isn't the first device to carry a camera into the air. But by getting all the details right, at the right price, we're opening up drones and aerial photography to a whole new category of consumers. This includes parents who will be able to capture their children's sports exploits and other special moments from a whole new perspective. Homeowners and realtors will be able to take beautiful aerial photos of their properties. And bikers, hikers, and surfers will be able to document their latest adventures from the sky. There's something magical about being able to capture aerial imagery. Just think of all the amazing, beautiful, funny, awesome moments you'll be able to capture with the Pocket Drone. The Pocket Drone is a real tool, not just a toy. Now, nobody can accurately predict the size of this rapidly growing market, but there's a few benchmarks and indicators that we can look at. First, the Parrot AR drone, probably the best known consumer drone product on the market, is said to have sold about $100 million worth of units. Next, we're positioning the Pocket Drone as the ultimate GoPro accessory. And analysts say that GoPro has sold about 4 million cameras and generated about a billion dollars worth of revenue in 2013. Lastly, the federal government is expected to issue new rules around business use of small unmanned systems in the near future. This will open up the floodgates for commercial applications, dramatically expanding the market. Now, looking to the future, we're designing a line of accessories and upgrades for the Pocket Drone and working with technology partners like Qualcomm Ventures-backed Brain Corporation to use Snapdragon-enabled artificial intelligence to make our flight control system even easier and more powerful to fly. Now, we're really excited and proud to announce here today the launch of our Kickstarter campaign. We think we've created a really special product, but we need your support. So please go check it out at thepocketdrone.com. We can't wait to see what you'll do with the Pocket Drone. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Quick poll. Who owns a drone? All of you. <laughs> very good. <laughs> I think coming up this year, it's going to be best. Yes. We, so, are, we are representative of the world, <laughs> obviously. Yes. Um. Since you're all drone owners. Have at it. Questions? What OS is it running? Currently, it's based on the uh, Arducopter OS and using an open source platform that we've added layers on top of to enhance the flight stability. Nice. And why did you decide on, on uh, Tri versus Quadcopter on the? Uh, it, basically, efficiency reasons mainly. Uh, we could get more efficiency with the larger propellers for our size factor, as well as we were getting video, better video results by the tail rotor. We could directly lock and hold the camera angle a lot more accurate. So one of the one of the motors is on a servo. W yes. Why is that? That's right. So. The rear motor is tilting to be able to counter the thrust. The front two rotate in opposite directions, but this one doesn't, whereas with a quad, you normally have four. Yeah. And so this tilting mechanism allows it to gener counter the adverse yaw effect. Excellent. The, the three motors also uh, optimizes for flight time uh, because you're only running, running three motors instead of four. Does it come with any built-in cameras as well? It does not. That's one of the upgrades that we're thinking about for the future is having an FPV kit, first person view. Um, although actually, we do have a version on Kickstarter uh, where we'll include a high definition camera uh, and video camera. Um, that and has action cam. And does that, whatever camera you connect, how does that connect with the app that you're using to control it or does it not? How are you controlling the There's drone? a Wi-Fi app that just like the GoPro or high-end okay. HD OEM cameras, they all come with Wi-Fi uh, apps for both uh, iOS and uh, Android. 
we didn't want to lock everyone into one camera manufacturer, so we kind of left some of that open so people could choose what cameras they like best, and whatever changes down the road, this won't get replaced by it. So I noticed that uh, the one that you showed off didn't have um, props that folded, o folded over. Why is that? Uh, it was just a safety consideration inside this small little box. I didn't want to have a potential issue with one. Oh, okay. But, but so you test like this the... This one flies, I can get it on fly right now. I just figured yep. with yep. the pressure of the moment, it was not the best. <laughs> I understood. I faced my money and they, they didn't want yeah. to really want to. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned there were, you wa didn't want this to necessarily be sort of a hobbyist thing. You want it to be an everyday. People are using it a lot. One of the things that I've sort of noticed with the drone that I have is I sort of ran out of ideas of what I wanted to do with it after sort of the initial, oh my god, I'm going to play with this every day. Um, what do you think the most common use cases that the average person will use? I think aerial videography and photography are going to be the main ones. But in addition to sort of what we talked about in capturing your adventures, or family moments, there's also even, you know, you want to look at the gutters of your home and see if they're full of leaves without climbing up there. Or even, you know, look at your, how your fence is doing if you have a largest property, you know, maybe with some things behind bush. So, but, you know, probably camera and video for all kinds of applications is going to be the main use case in the immediate future. We've also got some advanced research projects that are kind of taking uh, a look at like an app store kind of concept where you download your surf app or your snowboard app, that type of thing, and it's kind of an additional, um, it's not, not happening yet, but that's kind of where we're moving. That'll be V2.0 or 3.0. And, and why won't we see the clone of the drones in CES 2015? Uh, of, our, of ours? Yes. Um, so we are uh, trying to manufacture in North America, if possible, so uh, to try to avoid some of that. I mean, clearly it's going to um, be an issue if, if we're lucky, uh, right? And so if it's... Uh, my, my colleagues might not like this, but I'll be a little offended if nobody clones us because, you know, if you have a good idea, somebody's trying to clone you, and all the other drone manufacturers here have had that exact same experience. How much work do you guys have left to do before you can ship 10,000 of these? We are... Literally, it's pretty much in manufacture. Um, we're tweaking on mold designs right now. Uh, we have our own injection molding systems in-house that we use for prototyping and test work. And so we're literally just kind of finalizing many of the design aspects there and then make sure everything's fine-tuned. Uh, our basic main flight control hardware is pretty much well set right now. I mean, we're, we're lucky because Chance has a lot of experience in manufacturing consumer products. You know, TJ is a trained engineer, so we've got the right skills here to and that take it to market. And you've got three people on your team right now? Three cool. people in-house, and you know, we're pulling in uh, resources. Um, you know, our have, you, have you shipped any to test customers, or is anyone outside of the company playing with one at the moment? So actually, yes. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about the drone communities that we run, and, and people within those communities have been testing them and giving them feedback. And that's sort of how we knew we were ready to present this to the world, when they were like, yeah, this is cool. How many, how many units are in the field? Um, we've got like six or seven. Cool. Somewhere right around there. Um, two are on a permanent voyage somewhere. I haven't seen them back in about <laughs> six months, so we, they we, seem to be enjoying them. They've asked me for more batteries. But to, just to touch on that, so we, the community we run has about 2,600 members worldwide, so it's a pretty wide swath when we're ready to kind of really test it uh, when, when the uh, production mode models come out. And how are you seeing price versus cost, and how does it compare to the cost of the GoPro camera? Uh, that's a good point. So um, we hope, but in our head, we see the GoPro point of purchase displays in the front of your sporting goods stores, and right next to that, we're kind of hoping is the point of purchase display for the pocket drone. So the price point is uh, about 495 MSRP, and um, so it's right around the same kind of cost point. And um, I think we think they make the perfect accessories for each other, actually. And that covers includes everything you need to start out of the box. If you're already an RC enthusiast, we know there's a about 445 that will if you have your own RC. The applications you've been talking about don't really require that much flight time, and you cost $200 more than the Parrot. Why would I buy your drone versus theirs? So that, that's a, up quickly. Right. That's a really good question. The Parrot is much more of a toy than a tool. It can't carry a high-quality camera, although it does have something on board. But you wouldn't use that to really capture anything. Uh, high quality. Also, the autopilot uh, situation we have going on with this and the GPS. The automated follow me networking communication. There's a lot more packed into this. Right. It doesn't have them. any of those advanced features. You can set right. it off and have it come back. What's the shit you off there. Six minutes is up. You guys have okay. so many questions. <laughs> we're glad curious. you were interested in the product. That's a good sign. <laughs> that is a good sign, a great sign. I, I like drones myself, and I'm interested in that as well. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for you having us.
So drones, we all have drones, huh? I you got one too? I have one as well. I nice. took mine up after a big ice storm a few weeks ago. Flew it way up high, 30 meters high, and then all of a sudden my, my battery on my phone went to nothing. Oh my God. <laughs> so it was a good day for it in the Burns household. Well, thank you for joining us on Stakes here. This has been the final uh, the final segment of Hardware Battlefield. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock, we're going to bring a group of these back up for the finals where we're going to award one of them $50,000 in a gigantic robotic statue, which I'm sure the TSA is going to love. <laughs>